What's going on guys, Matt Schaefer back here with another Mosaic audiophile build for you. This is a 2020 Mercedes G-Wagon. Let's check it out. Starting out with the trunk, this is the subwoofer enclosure. So looking at the back floor, this whole area right here would be considered the subwoofer enclosure. It is a down firing 13 TW5 subwoofer from JL Audio. We mimicked what you see on the front door sill. I'll show you that right now. So these are the front door sills, which completely illuminates and has this kind of design, kind of looks like a G. So I basically mimicked that into the rear, but I just kind of made it fit our different angles. Kind of looks more like a G back here, but again, stole that from the front uh, door sills. And then the design, all the little holes here. So this has Burmeister from the factory and the Burmeister grill always resembles the circle design, which expand, go inward, and then they turn and twist and get bigger and smaller. Um, so that is where we got that idea from. So this is backlit. I just kind of made a light box. That's why it uh, distributes the light super evenly. And of course it illuminates when the trunk is opened with the factory trunk light. Uh, this is Alcantara suede which is gonna match our headliner perfectly. We have this Mercedes carpet, which is the same exact twill carpet as what you see on the factory. I utilize the factory tie downs. So this actually bolts into the top of the enclosure. I can overlay some pictures here of the enclosure, but uh, this bolts into the top of the enclosure. And then I made these little trim rings out of black acrylic just to make it look like it's supposed to be there. So all in all, when you look back here, it looks like it, it's kind of the factory floor. Uh, subwoofer is completely hidden. You have about maybe an inch or so of uh, distance between the bottom of the sub where it meets the floor. Always lo love down firing subs just because of how they sound. The, the roll off is always much smoother with it firing into the ground or into the carpet. This is where the factory subwoofer enclosure was. We have both our amps behind this panel. I can overlay some pictures here of the amp rack, but we essentially have the Nav TV Zen M interface, which sits behind this panel. We have a XD, I want to say 601 going to this 13 TW5. And then we have a JLVXI eight channel DSP amplifier. So that means we have a three way up front and then our rear set of factory speakers, which everything runs active off that amplifier. So that handles everything and then has a preamp output that goes to our XD601. So everything is still tuned, time aligned, e EQ'd accordingly. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty bright out right now and you can still see all of this lit up pretty well. So the light box idea worked out really great and uh, it's trimmed off with this last piece of trim with that chrome insert there to match a lot of what you see up front. We'll take a look at that in a second. So you still have a lot of usable space. We still have access to this piece up here. Really, we just got rid of a little bit of space. It actually bolts down to where the factory tie downs were underneath this. So basically there's a steel uh, crash bar that extends this way, which had two more tie downs right here and here. So underneath this panel, this whole enclosure actually bolts down to that area in the factory screw holes. So we didn't have to make anything else, no new holes, no new nut certs or anything like that. Um, also this whole panel here, I can overlay a picture as well, but this is one organic piece of PVC. So I basically routered it out in 2D all flat and then I notched it on the table saw here and here, and then I used heat to completely bend all this into one shape. And then obviously we have a ton of magnets backloaded on this panel that basically snaps it right on. So it, it'll just pull it in place. Um, they're about 13 pound magnets. So again, it's not going anywhere. They're not rattling or chat chattering. All right, so taking a look at the inside again, this is the new 2020. So the display uh, is basically the cluster and the radio display. It extends from here all the way to there. Looks really good. 
I typically don't get impressed by a lot of interiors and you know really nice cars but this one for some reason just speaks to me um, just the material choice the depth how everything is kind of modular love the air vents it's the first thing I actually notice when I get into the car they're just really cool I love the design how it's basically concave slopes in so that's the first thought I had when thinking about the pillars, just thinking, wouldn't it be really cool if I could mimic this to do the A pillars, maybe for the mid-range. So it's kind of exactly what we did here. So it's two scale identical to this. Made out of acrylic and I used heat to bend all of the little spike parts inward to match the same idea of what you see here, how it's all sloped inwards. So the mid sits behind this bottom panel, and then of course the tweeter sits behind this up here. So again, utilizing the factory Burmeister type of grill pattern, which you can kind of see here on the door. This is where the factory mid was. And the reason we didn't utilize this spot is because of this reason, right? The mid range is the most important speaker in the car. And in this case, it's basically covered with your knee. Uh, Porsche does this a lot in their 911 as well. I, I really don't like it for just imaging purposes. When you have it that low and it's being obstructed by your leg, it's never going to sound great. So we were able to get them up here. Luckily, it turned out really well. Might be some of the favorite pillars I've ever built just because of how it really looks with the dashboard. Uh, again, if you look at the, the air vents there, and then look up at the a pillar it looks it looks really good and uh the car images very well this is another off axis type design again if i were to make that on axis it would just kind of look stupid it would be a lot more obstructive from the windshield side so that whole thing would have to kick out which would make it look like a much bigger structure and a lot of times when you are working with speakers like this off axis a lot of times you can kind of play with the exact plane of where those speakers are sitting and sometimes you can use the reflection of the side windows and the windshield for your benefit right so you can actually make it sound wider than it appears based on the reflections of the glass from side to side so again this worked out really well sounds excellent these are a bunch of different layers of acrylic so you can kind of see the different depths and layers of this you have a piece of quarter inch acrylic that goes around both speakers and then you have another piece which is this silver piece and then the black piece and then this trim here which you also have focal engraved there into that panel as you can see Burmeister is engraved in this one down here similar to the same type of design obviously that is kind of a big component of the door would have been a lot of labor to kind of rechange that so we just kind of kept that as is and branded ours up here now the factory tweeter pod was originally right here so this was silver we painted it black just so it doesn't jump out uh, because now that is our new focal point up there we didn't want that tweeter pod uh, the factory tweeter pod to jump out so again you could use a factory locations but again it's going to sound much more superior in this case and how we executed it i believe it really blends in with the factory styling now i mentioned that we use the nav tv zen interface and basically that is replacing the factory amplifier so it uses most which is the fiber optic network and it plugs directly into where the factory amplifier plugged in and that is basically going to de-time align, de-equalize, give you a perfect signal, 20 to 20,000 hertz unclipped. And it's gonna also give you the ability to have a Toslink output, which would then go into our VXI amplifier for a digital signal. So it mixes everything, the nav voice, the Bluetooth, all of that kind of stuff is perfectly mixed, the chimes with the outputs so again it's essentially turning this factory radio into an aftermarket radio and giving you the best signal to work with now with our 
interfacing, we use the JLVXI amplifier, as I stated, which is a DSP and amplifier all in one. And this here is going to be our source switcher, and it's our master volume and our master sub. So in that case, this is basically our volume, right? Subwoofer there as well. And if I click that once, that will then go to our factory radio. So essentially, we can go here on the factory radio, just go to radio. And just like that, we are using the factory system. So the cool thing I really love about the JLVXI stuff is the controller really is quick to switch different presets, which if you've seen some of the things that I've done with the Moscone stuff, it's a little bit more cumbersome in order to switch presets. This one, you just tap the top, you're at the next preset. So really easy to switch between different presets. And if I hit this one more time, it illuminates red and then that will be the AMAS. So we could then pair our phone to the radio and to the AMAS at the same time. We can see the album art and information on the radio while transferring the music digitally directly to the processor. So even though we're using the Zen piece, it still gives you just a little bit more clarity than you're go going to get running through the factory system. Again, talking about uh, the third preset, this is going to go to our Astell and Kern high res player. So this is the SP2000. You see this is uh, the one I use most frequently in different builds and it really is spectacular. What this is going to do that your phone is not going to do is a few things. So the reason they make these is to play audio the best way that audio can be played, right? So the, the best analogy I can use is this is like a 4K UHD home DVD player, right? And you could have a VHS player, you could have a DVD player, you could have a Blu-ray player. They're all going to process information differently and be able to decode information differently. So this is made to decode music the best way possible. It can also play the highest codex possible um, and the highest resolution of DSD, of FLAC files, which most phones cannot do. Now, if you have an Android phone, Android phones can, I'm not really versed on Android, but I know that you can play DSD files on some Android phones or high res FLAC files on Android phones. But what the phone is not going to do is going to have a good DAC built into it. You know, they don't build the phone for the DAC. So the way this is gonna break down a digital file is gonna be much different. This has a dual DAC, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. So when you play music through this, the separation from left to right, the width, the depth, the dimensionality, all that kind of stuff is gonna be greatly enhanced because you're using the player. You're also gonna notice the music is gonna sound better in parts because some of it is sampled at a higher rate, but more than not, those tracks that are sampled at a higher rate, um, if we're talking about older music, is going to be remastered. So when they're remastered, a lot of times they're gonna take out a lot of the noise, the noise floor in the song, they're going to, the master is going to have his own creative spin on the song, therefore making it sound a lot more intriguing or way different than you've heard it in the past. So that's something to note. Again, there's a lot of gray area with high res and what is and what isn't giving you the benefit of better quality sounding music or perceiving better quality sounding music. Uh, now, a lot of songs today, you know, like I played the weekend there a second ago, um, these albums are being recorded at a higher rate. And the reason for that is so when it goes out to Spotify and Pandora and Slacker, uh, you have better audio quality because it's been recorded at a much higher rate. So when it's compressed, it's going to essentially sound better. So you can really take advantage on a lot of new music that's actually recorded at the rates that it's saying, more times than not, somewhere around 2448 or 2496. Uh, really anything over 2496 was not recorded in that format and was remastered to basically obtain those qualities. So just something to note about how all this stuff works. You can purchase music. I don't think I've really ever mentioned this. You can purchase music at hdtracks.com. It's kind of the most uh, popular resource for the different players. Just like an iTunes store, you can go and find the music and then download the album 
and this basically just works like a USB USB card. You can then throw the music onto this to uh, get all of your current music. You can also stream Tidal, even Spotify, uh, Pandora, whatever, through this unit here, which is really cool because again, you're benefiting from the DAC of the player giving you the difference of sound. Again, it's this playing the same media as what your phone would, this is going to sound better because it has a very, very high end dual DAC in it. So something to note about this, you can still use streaming services with the SP2000. And as you can see with this unit, we have it running analog input into our DSP as one of the two inputs. And the reason for this is if we're running it digital, we're no longer using the DAC of the player, right? We're using the DAC of the Bluetooth receiving end. If it's going Bluetooth or if it's a digital input like optic or coax, we're then using the receiving side of that optic or digital input for the DAC. So this is the best way to use this in a car to get the best sound quality and take advantage of the player that you're spending money on. Not really sh sure what else to say about this. Again, we use the Focal Kevlar three ways up front. Uh, we have the woofer down here, the mid-range and the tweeter all run active from the GLVX iAmp. We are utilizing the factory rear speakers because hello, they're factory rear speakers. That is just gonna be a complimentary speaker to kind of give you the idea of a bigger car to replicate basically a reflection that you're hearing in front of you. So that's how we have them tuned. They're heavily time delayed, they're heavily high passed, and it's basically just making the interior of this car sound bigger when they when they are on. So it's not really contributing to the quality of music that you're hearing from these front speakers. Like always guys, I appreciate the feedback. I appreciate you guys following these jobs. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, you can leave them in the comments below. If you want to hit me up for a job, if you have questions about your car, here is my email followed by my phone number. These are the best points of contact for me. Also, make sure you follow our Instagram handles. Here they are below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that bell for notifications when we drop new videos of jobs just like this. You know, if you wanna stay on the end with car audio or you wanna see what's coming out or you just like seeing the projects or the fab, make sure you hit that bell so you subscribe and you're alerted when new videos come out. Also, if you have a project and wanna see past projects of a library that we've done, check out our website, www.musicdesign.com. Here you can see everything broken down from the entire collection. You can search by make manufacturer, you can search by different job type and all the build log pictures that you're seeing like right here overlaid uh, with what I'm talking about. These are all in each album followed with the YouTube video linked to each album. So check that out. And always guys, I appreciate the follow. So thanks, I'll see you again. Baby, you got it, you'll be safe.